Welcome back, dear viewers. Um, and this is the um, time that we're going to be talking um, more about medical um, infections and um, things that really affect the lungs. So if you missed the last program, please do watch it again. It explains the anatomy, physiology of the lungs. So we're going to go in this um, session about talking about really um, things that most of us will face um, sort of winter time um, and things like flu, pneumonia, colds. And we are very blessed um, to have with us, join with us, um, Dr. Saeed Madhani. Welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Mm. Um, it's a pleasure to have you. Um, and, and just to echo the words of Zara as well, make sure that you do watch the last episode um, yeah. with uh, uh, Saeed Yasser because it kind of gives you the foundation of what we're going to speak about for the rest of the episode. So, as she mentioned. Yes. Um, we have you had flu this year? Have I had flu this year? Oh, well, a cold. Coincidentally, man cold. No, man coincidentally, cold. we're going to be talking about um, um, Iraq uh, mm. in this episode because mm. we, we talked about this before we went on air. Um, and I came back from Iraq just not long ago. Right. Um, and yeah, I had this 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 really really bad flu. I'm okay. not sure if it was directly from Iraq. Yeah. I, I probably think it was. Um, I came in for about two three weeks. Um, I still had the symptoms. Didn't really want to take anything, didn't want to go to the mm -hmm. doctors because I know it's just one of those things. However, you kind of get worried after a while because if it's two, three weeks, your voice is still not, not, not good and you still have, for example, runny nose. Um, you feel like maybe it's something that you need to get checked out. But alhamdulillah, it's all So yeah. to, just, to give Ali his consultation now, we will yes. refer to the expert Perfect. for your man flu. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> is there such a thing as man flu? Anyway, no, general flu. <laughs> Uh, what's the first question? What's the real question? <laughs> <laughs> the real question is flu. We, we, we have, yeah. have, have so we're talking about there. things that are kind of uh, the everyday common illnesses that affect yeah. um, the lung yeah. uh, or the lungs because there's two of yeah. them. Yeah. We found that out from the past episode. But yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, tell us first. I think it was the cold, the, yeah. kind of the common common cold, the yeah. flu. What you know? What can we really do to? to what causes them? And I guess what them? can we do to help treat them? Yeah. And yeah. you know, to avoid sort of. I, mean, like I said in my intro that you know A and E GPs, these are all places where you know people turn up. So what what is it that we are we doing the right thing as patients? Yeah. So uh, the common cold. Let's just distinguish between common cold and flu. They're both uh, flu is just short for influenza. They're both mm. viruses. The the flu is caused by the influenza virus. There's different types A, B, and within them there's different uh, strains. Um, and then the common cold are due to more benign viruses, if you like. Um, less serious than influenza, such as adenovirus, rhinovirus, coronavirus. Um, uh, there's a long list of viruses. So um, the common cold often just causes symptoms uh, such as um, runny nose and sore throat and just feeling a bit groggy, maybe uh, a bit of laryngitis, pharyngitis, which is inflammation of the throat. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. And it ca can then lead on to ear infections as well, sinus infections. Uh, very rarely can lead to a viral meningitis, which is not the serious type of meningitis. Um, but it's, it's mainly up here. It's right. ear, nose, throat, if you like. Influenza actually can make you generally unwell. Um, again, no, sort of running nose, sore throat, cough. You can have a cough with common cold as well, yeah. phlegm. Um, but you gen generally feel run down. Which one is the, the one that gives you a bit of a fever? You so they feel can, they cold, can both but give you not. fever. Oh, okay. uh, right. But more so with influenza. Right. Um, and uh, influenza can just make you feel listless, very tired. Yes. Mm. And one of the things that often distinguishes between the two is with the flu, you just feel like you can't get out of bed or you, yeah. don't, you can't go to work. With the cold, you can probably just crack on and go to work, etc. cetera. Um, uh, the flu can also cause other symptoms outside of the ear, nose and throat. It can cause diarrhea and vomiting. It could, oh, wow. mm. um, uh, and uh, can cause headaches as well. And your immune system is going to be quite busy trying to find that cold and therefore people that are at risk which we'll talk about shortly mm. um, if they get the flu they may get superimposed bacterial infections on top All right. so they, yes. they are at risk of getting a pneumonia in mm. the lungs on top of the flu um, mm. they may have even pre-existing lung conditions which already put them at risk of pneumonia let alone the influenza so there's a double double hit if you like mm. um, so uh, it's normally a self-limiting illness, and the virus dies on its own. Um, there's no treatment that will kill the virus. There are some treatments that 
in some situations we can give, such as Tamiflu, for example, um, in the case of influenza, not the other viruses, um, uh, which will reduce the duration of the illness, but will not kill the virus as such. Right. Uh, and actually, those, uh, those antivirals, if they're not started within about 48 hours, there, there's no point taking them if you present later than that to a uni or to your GP. So there's some simple things that can be done for both the flu and the common cold. Um, and probably worthwhile doing those rather than trying to pitch up, you know, in A and E or actually waiting to see your GP, because mm. there's more important things that that the GP will will, will be seeing than the common yeah. cold. Um, the flu, people can be sick with it. So mm. if you do have certain red flag symptoms and you're very unwell with it, even if you're healthy and you don't have those risk factors, you should probably go and see someone because right. you because you could develop a, a complication of the flu. Uh, but if you don't have those red flags and you just have a common cold, mm. then simple things like bed rest, yeah. um, keeping well hydrated. Mm -hmm. One of the things that, that fresh, you can... Fresh orange juice. Fresh orange juice, that's absolutely, yeah. definitely, <laughs> because, and literally that's what I do. Yeah. I, 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 I squeeze the orange juice myself, yeah. or the oranges myself and make fresh, fresh juice, um, uh, because that contains a lot of vitamin C, mm -hmm. which is very useful for the immune system. Mm. Um, there are other things like onions, actually. In, onions. in our cultures, yes, in our culture, yes, yes, we yes, use yes, a lot yes, of yes. onions and garlic. They, they are very good antiseptics. And in fact, some some people, it's a bit gross, but some people actually cut an cut onion in half, leave it in the room, leave it in the room, yeah, because it sucks all the germs from around the room. You're yeah. coughing up all these bugs. 100%. Keeping the room uh, well ventilated, so opening the window for all those germs mm. to to leave. Um, just you getting a, a cup, hot water, lemon, ginger. And, and, lem uh, and honey. honey, very good for the pharyngitis and the laryngitis, sore throat, um, really soothes, soothes that. Just simple remedies from over the counter, mm. a lot of which I don't believe in personally. Lozenges are good for the sore throat. Again, they're not, they, they last for a bit and then you, you, know, you have mm. to take another yeah. one. Um, but all these things are self-help things. You know, they're just symptomatic things. None of them ca kill the yeah. cold. There's, again, cough syrups that you can buy, etc. cetera. I, I don't believe strongly in them, but you can use them. There's probably no harm. Ibuprofen probably has more evidence scientifically than all of these other remedies. Ibuprofen, as long as you don't have asthma or stomach ulcers yeah. or heart failure or kidney failure, mm. ibuprofen is safe to take just for a, a couple of days. Mm. Not on an empty stomach after you've eaten. That's quite good for sore throat. Right. Paracetamol is good for general aches and pains. Both mm. are good for fever. Mm. So there's a lot that you can do without needing to actually go and see your the GP doctor, yeah. about these things. And, and people should be doing that. Unfortunately, we block up our GP waiting rooms yeah. and our A&Es and urgent care centers and you know, walk-in centers with things that don't need to be there. And th a lot of that includes the common cold. So I guess what you're saying is, um, you know, try to do the um, sort of treat it at home as much as you can. Mm. If you get, if you develop certain red flag symptoms, then yeah. obviously consult your, mm. um, you know, the, the doctors. Um, mm. How how so? Say you, I start getting symptoms um, of flu um, or a cold, and then um, how how what's the time period for the you know you're contagious and sort of mm. how to avoid spreading your germs so that others aren't going to. That's be a very good question, actually. I was going to touch on that. Thank you for asking that question. So it's very basic, you know, just simple hygiene. Anytime you cough, anytime you sneeze, Take cough it. or sneeze into a tissue, discard that tissue straight away. Mm. Don't put it back and reuse it and put it somewhere. Mm. Wash your hands. Because those viruses are not just spread by coughing and sneezing, they're spread by contact. Contact yeah. as well. So in fact, if you can avoid shaking hands or touching people or you know, embracing people or hugging people, avoid close contact just for those, you know, 48 hours, 72 hours whilst you're contagious. Right. And what, once your symptoms start to get better, then you're, you're probably no longer contagious. It's probably worthwhile avoiding contact with people that are high risk mm. of having um, complications of the flu should they get the flu. Those people are pregnant women, mm. all right? If you have a cold or the flu, um, Yes, the cold is not as serious as the flu, but you may not know. Mm -hmm. the, co the flu may start as, as symptoms of the cold. And some people find it difficult to distinguish. So it's easier to just stay away from people that are high risk, people above the age of 65, people that have long-term medical conditions, heart disease, lung disease, kidney, liver disease, diabetes, all of those things, um, to an extent, can, have a, can, um, can make your body weaker because they affect those major organs but also they can suppress the immune system, relatively speaking. Anyone who is a transplant recipient, mm. so they've anyone that has received an organ, um, 
whether it's liver, kidney, lung, heart, should by default be on uh, anti-rejection tablets, mm -hmm. which prevent the body from fighting the, that foreign organ, right? right? Those anti-rejection tablets suppress the immune system, yeah. so they are more prone to infections. Yeah. So avoid contact with those people. Yeah. Um, uh, babies and infants as well, avoid contact with them because they're prone um, as well. And those are the major categories mm. of people that are at risk, avoid contact with them. Do that basic hand hygiene. If you have diarrhea and vomiting as well, mm. um, probably avoid using that same toilet as the you know, person. So use one toilet yes. in the household if you have more mm. than one and let the rest of the family use another. Mm. Or clean the toilet after you if you can. Don't use the same towel. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whether you have cold and cold or di diarrhea and vomiting, whichever. Don't use the same towel. Use your separate towel for the, for the duration of the illness. Wow. So, okay, cold, influenza, these are the kind of the symptoms. Yeah. Is there something worse than that that we need to consider? I think there was, we were going to... Yeah, so, it, the influenza in itself, as we said, can predispose people to develop pneumonia. Mm. Those that are at risk, and I've just mentioned those yep. categories of people that are at risk, and, and those even that are healthy. Mm. So, you know, sadly, we do see people die from influenza. Not really? un, Not uncomplicated influenza, those that have developed complications. Okay. Yeah, so influenza can lead into pneumonia, whether it's a pure viral pneumonia, the virus has caused the pneumonia in the lungs, or has led to a bacterial, or predisposed someone to have a bacterial pneumonia. Either way, I mean, it's slightly academic, it's difficult yeah. to distinguish. You treat for both anyway, for to cover the virus and the pneumonia. But that can develop into other complications, such as respiratory failure. Right. Just before we go into pneumonia, what is it? What, what are the symptoms? How Very good. You? So, breathlessness, mm -hmm. okay. cough, phlegm. Cough and phlegm without breathlessness can just be the cold or the mm. flu. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, don't get too alarmed just because you have a cold and phlegm, you're not going to die. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But if you start developing breathlessness, you shouldn't generally, in a young, healthy person with no preexisting, shouldn't generally develop breathlessness with a cold or just the flu that has not affected the lungs. Mm. Once you start getting breathless, you start worrying that something's happening in your lungs, such as a pneumonia. Chest pain. Chest pain is not a common symptom of pneumonia, but if the, so by pneumonia, we should probably take a step back and define it very simply. Mm. It's just infection in the lung tissue and, and the air sacs mm. getting filled with fluid and, and, and pus and okay. what have you. Do you feel anything that your lungs So feel? you don't normally feel anything, yeah. but as I was just about to say, it's, if the infection is touching the pleura, if yeah. our, if you guys and also our viewers remember from the previous episode, we talked about the anatomy, yeah. the pleura is a thin lining around the lung. Yeah. If the infection is close to the pleura, it's touching the pleura, it can cause a sharp pain each time you breathe in. Right. Okay. But other than that, it doesn't normally cause pain. Yeah. You don't feel the gunk and mm. the, the secretions in your, mm. in your yeah. alveoli. Yeah. If it's a bit more proximal, if the secretions are in your tubes and your airways, you feel secretions in your airway, so you cough up phlegm often. Right. You feel your chest rattling, you feel a bit wet. Yeah. Mm. Yeah? So that's another symptom of phlegm in the chest rather than phlegm up right. here. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So those are the symptoms. And then if you have a fever which is not settling, if you're shivering a lot, yes. if you're sweating a lot, these are other symptoms. Again, not every fever means you have a pneumonia. Yeah. Probably most people that have fever just have the flu or the common cold. But if certainly if it's not settling and it's a very high fever, 39 or above degrees Celsius, then you know, you sh and, and definitely if you have pre underlying medical conditions, if yeah. you have a fever, you should probably see a doctor. Do you, right. think, um, do you think that people um, sort of roll up into A&E and see their GPs because they're concerned that, you know, they don't know how to handle the flu, that they generally feel unwell, or do you think they worry about that it's something that's more um, serious than actually what it is, and there are yeah. sort of, of, you explained what they can do at home, but do you think there is a concern that people think they're, they're worse than they actually are? Yeah. Because um, mm. what, I mean, only because I work in, um, sort of, we monitor sort of A&E attendances and things, and that, it's, it's quite fascinating to see the numbers that roll up in, you know, yeah. sort of the winter time. So yeah. what is the cause, do you think? So that's a very interesting question. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, the answer to that question is quite long, and yeah. I'm certainly no, no expert in this. But I think a lot of it is perception of the per person. Mm. If a person is very stoic and blasé and, you know, oh, I've just got the cold, I'll stay at home, you know, like men often do when they have the flu, they stay at home and, you know, they, they're... Can we they're, do it they're, technical they're, name, they're, sen they're sensible and they stay at home <laughs> yeah. and rather than pitch up. I'm joking. Um, uh, but there's people that have a high degree of anxiety associated with yeah. either the flu right. or cold or health in general or life in general. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not no. blaming them. No. You know, symptoms of breathlessness or what have you 
are unpleasant symptoms. If Definitely. people can't breathe or have the chest pain, they yeah. Yeah, might right. feel that they, they're going to die. Yeah. Um, so those symptoms, even in a healthy person, they should seek because something could be going on. Um, but I think there are many inappropriate attendances to any, whether it's colds or flu or other things, mm. other minor injuries that can be easily sorted out, you know, right. uh, at home or, mm. or other things. So there are inappropriate attendances. And on the converse, there are people that don't present when they should yes. present yeah. Yeah. and present when, when it's too late, late or, yeah. you know, they're very sick. The other red flags to mention as well, if pneumonia is an infection, mm. Uh, and any infection, whether in the lungs or outside the lungs, can cause sepsis. Mm. Sepsis can be life-threatening. People die from sepsis. It's one of the major killers worldwide. Yeah. Sepsis is the body's response to infections, and sometimes that response actually is damaging to the rest of the organs. Mm. The immune system becomes very active, and there's a lot of release of inflammatory mediators in the body, and in fact, they start to, in some way or another, attack the body. So the kidneys start to shut down, the heart starts to shut down, oh, yeah, yeah. the liver, the brain, etc. So sepsis needs to be tackled yeah. urgently with antibiotics and supportive treatment. Uh, and you know, one of the signs to, to look about, to look at, is you know when people's hands go cold. That's quite a late sign, actually, when the skin becomes mottled, okay. when the person becomes confused. That means there's less oxygen or less blood going to the brain. Yeah. When the urine uh, uh, output reduces. So they're producing less urine or the urine becomes very dark, which suggests that they're dehydrated. Mm -hmm. Those are very serious symptoms. They probably need to, you know, get themselves to A&E straight away. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. So those are things to, to, yeah. to, to, to be aware of. That. Thank you so much. We I still think wanted time. to talk about, you know, your, your adventures in Iraq yeah. and, and what you've seen there. Inshallah. Compared to inshallah, inshallah that time. Yep. But inshallah, we won't have time. Um, as for now, once again, uh, a very informed session for, for the viewers. And, and don't forget, if you do have a cold or a flu, stay at home. It's probably the best thing for you. <laughs> Um, and don't forget the onions as well. I'm only joking. But there's, there's obviously there's more things. Well, to it consider. might work, might it? Yeah. So you know, we we'll <laughs> um, have to try. But yeah, thank you so much for your time, thank you and, so uh, much. Doctor, Dr. Sayed. Uh, Look forward to the next session, and Shall we'll we continue this theme of um, lungs. So mm -hmm. hopefully, do stay tuned. And um, as we were saying, do listen, re-listen to the first show that we went through, yeah. sort of the background of the lungs and the function. So. Definitely. Um, after the break, we we're going to be joined by Sayed Ali Nawab um, for more jurisprudential fiqh issues. Stay tuned. We'll see you then.